If you know whom you may devour, which means you also know whom you may not devour. The devil cannot just walk over into your house and say, roll over, I want to eat you. No. The devil cannot devour anybody at will. And you are one of those he may not devour on the authority of scripture. So don't be there trembling and shaking in your boots saying, oh my God, the devil. No, no, no. You are one of those he may not devour. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone and praise Jesus. What a joy, what a privilege to have you watching us as we bring you this show, our Marvelous Believers show coming to you right from the Wema studios. And I'm always so delighted to be here and to have you watching us. And I know every day the Lord has been speaking to us and empowering us as the marvelous believers. Just before I bring up Pastor Ben Isaac, I, I wanted to share a thought that excited me this morning, uh, that from the foundations of the earth, today was known to God. Today was predestined by God. Whichever day you are watching us, whether you are with us live now or you watch us later, today, the day you call today, was already so predestined and you were included in that day. That from the foundations of the earth, God knew there would be a day like today and you were part of it. And so there is nothing that can go lacking, nothing can go missing, nothing can go wrong with your life because it's already so predestined by God. He cannot have missed anything out. What a glorious thought that is. Hallelujah. And now we are back to, uh, to our Marvelous Believer show. And uh, last week was hot in the studio. We were learning that we are superior to Satan. That was awesome. That was awesome. And guess what? That was only part one. Tonight we are going to part two. You are superior to Satan. I cannot even wait. I want you to remain seated. I want you to remain focused. I want you to just listen and as we learn these things, last week, uh, Pastor Ben Isaac said, this is the utmost knowledge. This is what every marvelous believer, the revelation of the marvelous believer is that you are, fami you are superior to Satan. That was what he said. This is the revelation for the marvelous believer that you are superior to Satan. He cannot oppress you. He cannot depress you. He cannot scare you. You are superior. That's what we learned last week. And I know today as we go to part two, there is so much more that God wants to empower us. In case you missed last week, be sure to check it out after this. So God bless you as you listen and I welcome Pastor Ben Isaac. Hello, this is Ben Isaac and this is the Marvelous Believer Program. And we are excited to bring you the word of God. Um, which is very beneficial for you. I believe that you've been blessed by the programs that we have already brought to you. Something definitely is growing in your spirit as you receive these words. Uh, in the previous program, we began by saying that the devil, Satan, and all his demons in all their ranks are inferior to you. They are inferior to you, and that makes you superior. And I was giving you many scriptures last time. So I want to continue. I want to build up on that point. But I want you to know that every time we open the Bible, we are reading or listening to the word of God, to the opinion of God. And I don't ever want you to forget that God is truth. God speaks the truth. God tells the truth. When he voices his opinion, that's exactly what you should take it as that. Jesus Christ said, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. God does not know how to lie. If, for example, he spoke about this studio as white, that's what it is. Doesn't matter what you think. So, when God voices his opinion on an issue, Stand there, believe it, say it like he says it, and you will see the hand of God in your life. So the words we are bringing to you right now are the opinion of God about you if you want to be a marvelous believer. So I want to build up on that thing and I want to read you a very interesting scripture. This is a New Testament scripture. Why do I call it New Testament? Because it was spoken about the post-resurrection Jesus. 
the Jesus who came back to life, the Jesus who has died and risen. These words are written in red, the words of Jesus. I want to read Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. I want to read it again. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, before, you, before we continue, I want us to read Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 and 18. The Bible says, this is the same post-resurrection Jesus speaking. From verse 17 to 18. And when I saw him, this is John the Revelator speaking, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive evermore, forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. I want us to go back to Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Jesus said, all power, that word power is the word authority. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. The simple question is this. If Jesus has all power or authority in heaven and on earth, how much does the devil have? Just take a few moments and think about it. Jesus himself said, all power or authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. If Jesus has all the authority and power, how much authority and power does the devil have? I'm leaving that for you. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 and 18, he says, I have the keys of hell and of death. So which ones does the devil have? This is Bible. This is the word of God. And I came to unveil to you who you really are. I am holding a giant mirror in your face that you will see exactly what God thinks about you. This is the opinion of God. And I have always said that God has a very high opinion of you. You are superior to Satan. Now, don't be deceived. Don't be sidetracked. Don't get confused. I want to put some perspective to these things. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. But you will still see the truth coming out. Chapter 5, verse 8. The apostle Peter is writing to the churches and he's saying, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. I want to read it again. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But it doesn't matter what, what Peter is saying here. We still have authority over the devil. But I want you to see three, three things. Three things. Number one. The devil walks about as a roaring lion. Other versions say, like a roaring lion. He is like a roaring lion, but he is not a roaring lion. He is imitating the roaring lion. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5, the Bible says Jesus Christ is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The devil is as a lion or like a lion. He is not a lion. <laughs> That's number one. The devil is not the lion. He is as a lion or like a lion. Amen. Number two. The devil walketh about. I want to read you something. You've seen that First Peter chapter 5. 
He walketh about. I want us to read the book of Job, an Old Testament scripture, the book of Job, chapter 1. We're going to read from verse 6 to verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 6 to 7. I want you to listen to this. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Where are you coming from? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Go to chapter 2. Chapter 2. Verse 2. And the Lord, this is now a second time. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Where are you coming from? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking. Did you notice that the devil is walking all the time? He is walking. The devil is not everywhere at the same time. He has to move from point A to point B. The devil is not omnipresent. The devil has to move from one place to another. Can you imagine him moving from Nairobi to Machakos? And the Bible says walking. The guy is so broke, he does not have transport to, to buy a car. Don't, don't, don't overestimate this fellow. God asked him, where are you coming from? He says, I've been walking. <laughs> walking. Peter says he's walking. Two times Job said he's walking. He must be very broke. Don't forget that. Number three. The Bible says he is seeking whom he may devour. If you know, if language means anything, listen carefully. He's looking for whom he may devour, which means he is not going to eat everybody. He is a selective eater. He knows if, if you know whom you may devour, which means you also know whom you may not devour. The marvelous believer is one of those he may not devour. The devil cannot just walk over into your house and say, roll over, I want to eat you. No. The devil cannot devour anybody at will. He knows whom he may devour. He's looking. He says, oh, that one I cannot, that one I cannot, the other one I cannot. Yeah, this one I can. But, yeah, the devil knows he is seeking whom he may. De if language means anything, you know I'm telling the truth. He's seeking. There are seven point something billion people on the face of the earth. The devil cannot eat them at will. And you are one of those he may not devour on the authority of scripture. So don't be there trembling and shaking in your boots saying, oh my God, the devil. No, no, no. You are one of those he may not devour. Don't forget that. Amen. The devil cannot come and devour you at will. Now, the thing is this. You have got to know it. You have got to understand it. You have got to see it in the scriptures. If you don't know, that's when you'll become a victim. You've got to know. You've got to know. And that's why this program has been put here for you, so that you will know. The Bible says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we want to thank God that now the knowledge is available. So the devil, poor devil, doesn't know what to do. Listen. At one point, we were under the devil's rule. At one point. There was a time when you were not a believer. There was a time when you were not a child of God. You were subject to the devil. You were under his authority, his rule, and his dominion. And so he could devour you at will. D do you remember what we spoke about at the beginning when we talked about God's headquarters? That, that, that we were all under the devil's rule and the demons could come and do whatever they wanted to do with us. Not anymore. There was a time when we were under his rule. The devil was so powerful that he could do whatever he wanted to do with us at any time. I want to read you a scripture in Colossians chapter 1, New Testament scripture, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, 13, and 14. Colossians chapter 1, 
verse 12, 13, and 14. And the man of God is writing and he's saying, Giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Who has delivered? He has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of our sins. He has delivered us. God has delivered us from that region of darkness, from the control of darkness, from the jurisdiction of darkness, from the place where the demons could just come and devour you at will. But the Bible says Jesus Christ came in and he rescued us. He delivered us. He plucked us from there. And you cannot be in two places at the same time. We are no longer in that world where the devil can just come and dev devour us and destroy us at will. We have been removed from that place. And we have been translated, transported, transferred, deported into the kingdom of God's dear son. We are no longer in the place where demons can come and molest us and squeeze us and, and press us and oppress us and depress us. No, not anymore. We have been delivered from that region. And if you're a marvelous believer, you should say it with your mouth. Say, I have been delivered from the power, from the authority, from the region, from the dominion, from the jurisdiction of darkness. I have been delivered. I am no longer in that world. Let the demons squeeze and, and devour whoever they want to devour. I am not one of them. You have been removed from that place. And I want to repeat, you cannot be in two worlds at the same time. In this area, there is no no man's land. You are either in one world or the other world. And the day you received Christ into your life, you, you were plucked from the authority and the region of darkness. Tell me something. Are you born again? Are you a child of God? Have you accepted Christ? Are you in the kingdom of God? Then if you are, then you should stop worrying about demons. Let the demons scream. Let them fall down. Let them throw their tantrums. But you don't belong to them anymore. We have been delivered from that region. The region of darkness is where diseases rule, where fears rule, where oppression rules, where all kinds of things rule. All the wizardry, all the witchcraft, all the bewitching, all the oppressions, all that, all the COVID-19 and COVID-50, all of them are there. We have been delivered from that region and we have been translated into a new world, the kingdom of God's dear son. And that is Bible. Believe the word of God. Don't listen to people who are cooking up theories in their heads which don't exist. You, if you're born again on the authority of scripture, it doesn't matter what you're seeing with your eyes. You have been delivered and rescued from the region of darkness and you have been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. And this was not your idea. God did it all by himself to the praise and glory of his grace. Amen. Listen, the devil was so powerful. So very powerful. But I want you to see something else in Ephesians chapter 1. This is a prayer that the man of God Paul is praying and is praying for the Ephesian Christians. And if it was good for the Ephesians, it's good for me. And if it's good for me, it's good for the marvelous believer. Paul is praying from uh, chapter 1 Ephesians, uh, verse 15 downwards. But I want you to see verse 20 and 21. Paul is talking about the power the great power, the incomparable power that God exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. He's talking about it in verse 20 and 21. Uh, this is where he says it. The power which he wrought, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Hey, Jesus Christ, the power that raised him from the dead. The Bible says God's mighty power was so awesome that it raised Christ from the dead and sat him at God's right hand in heavenly places. Not above but far above, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Call any name you can think of right now. Call any title you can think of right now. Call any military general, any president, any, call any chief, any king. 
God, Jesus Christ was raised to sit in a place far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the, in the world which is to come. You know, there is a world which is to come, an age which is to come. Jesus Christ is seated in a place far above. They are all far below. Demons and devils and powers and principalities, demons of witchcraft, demons of stealing, killing and destroying, demons of fear, demons of sin, demons of whatever, demons of death. Dem name them. I don't, even, I don't even know how many demons are there. Name them. All these demons in all their ranks, Christ is sitting. Far, the power of God raised him so high, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. And so we look up. And we see Jesus Christ highly exalted. And we worship him. Awesome God. You are highly exalted. And we worship him. And we raise our hands and we celebrate and we see him. The demons can't touch him. The diseases can't touch him. They can't kill him. They, they can't impeach him. They can't overthrow him. They can't vote him out of office. He's seated in a far high place. In heavenly places. Are you listening to me? He's in, and so we worship him. What about us? We are down here. We are down here. And, and, and what about us? What about us? We are worshipping him. We see him in a high, high place. Now, did you notice, did you notice that the man who wrote Ephesians chapter 1 is the same man who wrote Ephesians chapter 2? When that thing was written, it was not written in chapter and verse. The man was just writing. He just wrote, you know, the verses and chapters were written just for easy reference for us. But when Paul was writing, he was not writing chapter and verse. So he's building his same argument and he's saying something and he's reading. I want to actually, I want you to see this. After verse 20, 21, 22, 23, he crosses into chapter 2 and he begins talking about us. Listen, verse 4 to 6. Ephesians chapter 4 to 6. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he hath quickened us together with Christ. In other words, in the mind of God, when Christ came back to life in that grave, you came back to life, marvelous believer. He quickened us together with Christ by grace, are you saved, and hath raised us up together, together, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, uh, question, where is Jesus Christ? Where is Jesus Christ? In heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named. Question, where are you? And you reply and say, I am in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name. Marvelous believer, you are sitting in a place together with Christ. That place is far above all principality and power and might and dominion. All the demons in your village, all the demons of, of your ancestors, all the demons of the witches and the wizards, all the deep. Jesus Christ and you, marvelous believer, are sitting far above all. All principality and power and might. And I want to rub it in. You, 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 the marvelous believer, are sitting in a place in Christ far above. You are inaccessible to demons and devils and powers and principalities. You're sitting in a heavenly place far above all principality and power and might and dominion. And every name that is named, not just today, but also in the world which is to come. Clap your hands if you have any hands. You are inaccessible to demons. You are superior to Satan. Never forget what I said. Oh, there's a demon in town. Forget about those demons. You are superior to them all. And I would like to thank God for each one of you who is listening and I want to pray for you. Every fear that has bugged your life is living right now. As the word of God comes, fear is living your life. And if you've never given your life to Christ, which means you are under all these principalities and powers, open your heart and say, Jesus, I confess your lordship. Come into my heart. I am saved. That easy from the bottom of your heart, you're born again. And I want to pray for you right now that the peace of God will overshadow you and change your life. You are having a contradiction in your body, in your finances, in your marriage, in your ministry, among your children. You're having a contradiction. You are seeing that God is promising you so much, but you're not seeing the manifestation in your life. And it's very possible 
that demons are molesting the people around you and manipulating things around you, manipulating your finances, and you do not know what to do. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus that as the word of God comes, the Bible says he sends his word and it heals them. He says that, that I'm watching over my word to perform. So right now I speak over your life that chains will be broken, that yokes will be destroyed, that burdens will be lifted around your life, that doors will begin to open for you. I release the peace of God to flow in your house. I release the glory of God to flow among your children. I release God's favor that brings finances into your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare peace. Peace over your troubled sea. That the hand of God will work mightily in your life. I command your life to turn around for the glory of God. To reflect what God has spoken about you. God has you in very high opinion. And I declare that it manifests right now in the name of Jesus. I thank God for you. And listen. Check yourself. The power of God is flowing through you. And when there is a testimony, call us. Call us. And even when you've not yet seen a physical manifestation of testimony, call, call Wema TV. Talk to somebody. We will, we will talk to you. We will help build your faith. But remember that you are superior to Satan. In Jesus' name, bye-bye. Wow. You have had it for yourself. And like Pastor has said, if you do not know, you become a victim. We thank God that now we know. If you do not know, that's when you become a victim. When you know and you know. Like he said, we cannot be in two worlds at the same time. We've already been removed from the world of the kingdom of darkness. And we are now in the kingdom, seated in the hallelujah. So if you know, you know. And now we know. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that empowerment. And I know we've all been blessed. Be sure to be with us again next week as we continue with this series of You Are Superior to Saturn. This has been Marvelous Believers Show from Wema TV. God bless you.